defense was a little better at the three-point line uh, the first half. I don't think we were aware of where their shooters were and how good they were shooting the ball. Um, we had to make a we had to play really good offensively in the first half just to get back in the game. We just made a few defensive plays in the second half, and I, that was that was really the difference, I think, in the game. Again, you know, I think Frank is starting to feel a little better out there shooting the ball. It's not there yet, but I think he is starting to, to feel a little bit better shooting it. Jalen did a good job in the time he was in there. I think we are getting better shooting the ball. Are the quality of shots, uh, especially the three-pointers, better now than they were no, earlier in the year? No, Oregon, we had wide, wide open, 10 feet open. 10 feet. Nobody within 10 feet of us. Just didn't make them. Jim, what's it show you that ACC road game to open ACC play? Your three leading scorers should all show up. Well, they have to show up. If they don't, we aren't going to win. You know, we, we depend on those guys. They're good players. Um, you know, I think Frank can score too. I think he's not there yet, but I'm hopeful. Uh, he averaged 15 points a game last year. They're giving him shots. He's getting out. They're not. Nobody's guarding him. He's going to get shots until he makes some. And as long as those other guys are scoring, those, you know, he's going to get some looks. Uh, we got the ball to Pascal in great position. He's got to make something happen down there. He's just he got the ball right where you, you, you can't get any closer. You know, he's got he got to be able to do something down there. And Barama got a couple of good rebounds. He's got to be able to finish something down there. I mean, you know, you can't get any closer than they're getting. Welcome to the Q's Militia Podcast with those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. What's up, Q's Nation? Thanks for tuning in to the Q's Militia Podcast with Sean and Joe. If you like it, please share it. The universal handle for the socials is at Q's Militia. Go there, join the militia. We are the only sports, Syracuse sports podcast centered around giving you, the fans, a platform. So, welcome um, we, we're going to give you the Notre Dame breakdown today, and uh, then we're going to look ahead to Wednesday. Uh, Clemson comes to the Dome, and we'll give you our preview for that. Uh, but first, as always, it is uh, me unorganized, as, as always, as well. Uh, look, um, if you have bet online before, you know, you know what you're doing. You might as well go over to my bookie. If you haven't bet online before, uh, I would research it and figure out what it's all about before you do it. Uh, so if you are already betting online, whether, you, whether you're a rookie or an expert, go to my bookie, try them out. Uh, if you're the kind of guy or gal that likes to bet a little and make a lot, like playing numbers at roulette, you can create a big parlay. What you do is you pick three teams to win. If you hit all three, you could turn 100 bucks into 600 bucks. There's a ton to bet on. There's still a bowl game left, college basketball, NBA, NFL playoffs going on, NHL, custom props, eSports, um, whatever that is. You name it, it's out there at my bookie. You can bet on it. Um, I recommend them because I trust them. My bookie has been in business for years. They've got great online reviews, and their mobile site is easy to use. Sign up this week, and my bookie will give you a 50% deposit bonus to jumpstart your bankroll. It's a great way to bank even more money when you win, and also make sure to follow them at BetMyBookie on Twitter. They personally respond to every DM and mention, uh, not to mention they've given away more than $10,000 in free money to their followers this football season. So um, you'll be the first to know as well when new odds and props are posted so log on to my bookie right now and use the promo code qs25 to get that 50 percent deposit bonus that's promo code qs25 and at my bookie as you know and you've heard me say you play you win you get paid so all right if you didn't listen to our Notre dame pregame show it is labeled as uh there is um we talk about the the ncaa evaluation tool and it's a tool <laughs> The whole thing's yeah. a tool. So, uh, and how we, much we don't know about it. And how much we don't know about it. But we, we do mention some things we do know about it or suspect about it. And um, it was just a rant we had. And I think it's good to go back. If you haven't, if you haven't heard it, just give it a listen and, and give us your feedback on it. That would be great, too. Because if you can help us understand it and we can help everybody else understand it, um, that would help us out, too. But it yeah. seems convoluted. So, anyway, uh, the email, you know. At gmail.com is always open to you. 
um, to steal a line. We want to know what you think about what we think. So you can always go there uh, or DMs on Twitter as well. Um, now, Colin Byrne, he is, um, would have been, could have been, maybe should have been a uh, sixth or fifth year offensive lineman. He won't be returning for his fifth year. Um, and he, he didn't play a game in this season, but he's not going to return. Um, Jeff Lepak, right, Joe? Lepak? Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> special teams quality control coach. He's leaving SU for a full-time assistant coach job at um, McNeese State. So we wish him luck. And yeah. uh, obviously we wish Colin Byrne luck too as well, whatever he does. And then finally, uh, it can no longer go unnoticed. And uh, – Pretty soon, I'm going to get my chops busted for it eventually. Yeah. Uh, so the women's basketball team, number 14 in the nation, women's basketball team. 13 and 2. 13 and 2, 2 and 0 in the conference, wins in the conference over Clemson and Virginia Tech. I believe they were both on the road, too, um, um, to open up ACC play. That's tough. That is tough. Um, so they're first in the ACC in the early going here, and they've got, uh, they, they, can, they actually can shoot. They can shoot pretty good. Yeah, so they got a pretty good team. I think they're on a seven-game winning streak right now. So. They're, all their percentages are better than the men's team. I mean, <laughs> I'm just going to say, as, yeah, as a percentage-wise, um, their free throws are 75.3%. From the field, they're 446 That's fantastic. And they're even 33% from distance, so um, really good. Um, yeah, shout-out so, to them. Yeah, shout-out. Good out season to, so far. Yeah, good season, and obviously we wish them luck as ACC play continues to the road to the tournaments. Um, so yeah, awesome. Um, okay. Well, the orange, they improved too. They improved to 10 and four and they're one in, oh, in the ACC after opening up conference play on the road. Uh, once Johnny, John Mooney, uh, threw down a dunk and Syracuse trailed by 10 coach made the right decision. In my opinion, he put Kerry in Kerry's first steps on the court were coast to coast layup. Um, showing everybody how it's done, uh, just went in and did it. Uh, he finished with four points of steal and an assist, but it was Hughes who piloted the orange, hitting uh, six of 13 from distance. He shot 50% overall and finished with um, 10 rebounds and 22 points. Brissett hit his stride on the road with another double-double, 11 rebounds and 18 points. Um, finally, seeing the production we want to see out of Brissett. Battle, he was eight for 17 from the field and finished with 17 points. Howard, he hit two well-timed threes. He finished with eight points. Mark and Chuku, they combined for 10 fouls and two points. Um, nice. <laughs> Mark, though, he was a scrappy self as usual. He was on the ground doing his thing. He didn't score any points. Um, that was actually um, Pascal. But I think, Mark, he grabbed six rebounds. Uh, it, but it was Sadibi, though, on the defensive end. He had two big plays uh, when the game was coming to a close, a block, and he took a charge. Uh, Syracuse shot 41.2% from the field, 41.4% from behind the arc, and 4 for 5 from the line as a team. A 17 to 5 advantage in favor of Notre Dame due to lopsided officiating, in my humble opinion. Uh, Cuse, they didn't even shoot a free throw till there was less than, or just about four minutes remaining in the game. Uh, Cuse held Notre Dame to 20 of 58. That's 34 and a half percent overall from the field, and they won the battle of the boards. They crushed it, 46 to 36, with 15 offensive. Those 15 offensive rebounds were turned into 11 second chance points in the series. All time sits at 30 to 20 in favor of Syracuse with Notre Dame. So, Joe. We talked the last two games, kind of scrub teams, and yeah. but we did notice the shots were falling. You heard Coach in the Coach montage at the beginning of the show say they're, they're not getting better looks. They're not getting more any more open. The shots are actually just falling. Yeah. And um, they're, they've improved. They've improved across the board, everywhere. So uh, foul shots, shooting from the field and behind the arc. Everything's improved in the last three games. And yeah. you, you got one of those games being a road win against Notre Dame. Well, they got a little bit of confidence going. Um, those last two wins, you, like we talked about, we, you saw <clears throat> the rotation of the offense <clears throat> a little bit better. Uh, and I thought you saw that again against Notre Dame, um, just the movement on offense, movement without the ball, a lot, a lot of things like that. Uh, it makes makes it easier to get open shots. Notre Dame went back and forth between the man and the zone, and we were – able to, to find open shots and good looks. And again, we were hitting shots, Elijah Hughes and uh, Brissett making shots, uh, ties battle. So when those three are on, then it's going to be tough to lose our defense. Uh, 
I mean, they were really in the game. I mean, they were playing tough in the beginning, and TJ Gibbs just were hitting all those threes, uh, the deep threes, and you kind of just know that that's not going to happen forever. For the so, whole game, right. Man, we right, talked about right. that at halftime. They were 50% yeah. at halftime hitting threes, yeah. 7 and for I 14. Said, and I said if we played the second half like we did the last 10 minutes of the first half, we'd be okay, and I think that we did. Frank Howard hit some hit some shots and uh, looked like he was playing a little bit better. But overall, I think it just had a lot to do with just taking over the boards um, and just, again, just taking good shots and making shots. You know, it's really what it comes down to. We didn't really – I mean, we won the turnover battle by one, but just getting those second chance points and stuff like that just, I mean, helped out a lot. And the fact that just Notre Dame, it looked like they kind of got tired near the end and they stopped making, you know, the shots that they were making. So – Kudos for the defense, and you know it's tough to go on the road and in uh and win a game in the conference. So yeah, especially against a team that can shoot. I mean, Notre Dame even without Fluger can shoot the ball. I mean, we went over that in the pregame uh, yeah. or in the preview. Um, you know, there was those two opportunities that they had. Uh, Notre Dame had after some full court press action. One of them was a turnover, but they did come back and they had opportunities to score and they missed wide open shots. And they were, yeah. they were one and done on those attempts. So they weren't falling, which is good. Maybe they were rushed. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. They didn't make them. So, um, you know, as it stands, as it stands, Notre Dame's RPI is 136. And we're breaking out the quadrants right now for everybody. Yeah. Um, they're on the edge of being a quad three win right now, even on the road. Yeah, well, so, I mean, that's really not – that doesn't really matter too much. Not, you know? not a, yet, but that's where it stands. Yeah. Well, I mean, with a it's a road game in conference. It's it doesn't matter what quadrant it is. We just need it to be a win, you know. Oh yeah. So, well, absolutely. I mean, y- yeah, absolutely. So I mean, you want it you want it to help our numbers, but I think we kind of know where they stand. I mean, they got some guys that can compete, but they look a little short-handed and young. Yeah. So well, they don't. Yeah, they don't have their seed legs yet, and that's kind of what we were hoping on, right? Yeah. Well, so, again, we could have got lucky. You know, they could be a much better team uh, come 10 games from now, but who knows? They, they could be. I'm not going to chalk it up to luck, though. I mean, I think Syracuse went out and played. They were down by 10. They put in Jalen Carey, who's a freaking lightning bolt. Uh, yeah. y- you know, they only played 11 minutes, but that one little spurt, that I, one I, little I spurt, agree, yeah, kind of got us going. It was seven-point run with him in there doing what he did. So, right. And he made plays and it's up. One of those things, it's one of those things, too, where now there's a guy where – you can put heat to Frank Fow- Frank Howard's uh Oh, he's nipping at feet. Frank's heels you know I mean? for playing time. Right. I mean, so, I think it was clear. Look, coach is going to – he knows way better than I do. But yeah. I would have given Carey at least nine more minutes and split the time. Because Frank did hit two – the two threes that he hit were clutch. Um, one was towards the end of the game, I think, or getting there. And when there was a little battle where we were kind of the points were tightening up a little bit here and there, and we'd pull away right. by like five, and then they tightened back up. And mm-hmm. I think he hit one during that time. But you know, how about Elijah Hughes? We used to say Elijah Hughes was like the safety valve to start the season. I mean, he's just becoming like an integral part of the offense, a reliable yeah. shooter, someone that they can kick it out to, that can make that shot, especially if they get good ball movement and they've got they you know they've got a guy off of him and he's got three, five feet in front of him, he can make that shot. Yeah, and that's the one thing that we kind of needed last year that we didn't have. So now we really just got to get the point guard position up to speed. I mean, the center position is what it is. Uh, I, they got to stop <laughs> kind of getting dumb fouls, you know? Yeah. Because uh, um, Chuku doesn't Chuku, have to be that aggressive when he's over there doing that. Chuku, I mean, I know he I played, mean, it's tough, but... He played 11 minutes and fouled out. Uh, I know. I mean... You gotta play like smarter Mark, than that. And Mark's last plays. last foul was going for a rebound way over the back, just like a. Well, looked, that was his fourth one. But was that his fourth I mean, one? Okay, you're right, because the other one was a push, right? And he was like boxing the guy out, the guy out of yeah, bounds yeah, type yeah. thing. Yeah, but yeah, you have to just know when to give up on a, a play and not get that stupid little silly foul. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you only get so many of those, man. You got to be a little bit smarter about that. I mean, shoot, even Sadibi even had three, so. I know, but the game gets yeah. tight, goes into overtime. Huh. I know that was I was worried about that, but I mean it was clear towards you know towards the end of that game, Syracuse was pulling away. I, I think there was a span there where I think uh, Notre Dame was like one for nine or one for seven or something. Yeah, you like know that. what I kept thinking? 
<laughs> what? I kept thinking, you know, that whole thing where there was people in the local, you know, media or whoever was talking about trying to put O'Shea Brissett in the middle of the center. Yeah, yeah. And okay. I kept thinking to myself, <laughs> are they going to have Sidibe, to do that? If Sidibe followed <laughs> out, what would they have to do? And if there would be something seen, you I, know what I mean? Oh, I know. You and you know that if Jim Beheim did that, he was going to maybe not catch hell, but because there's an no, out, he has no, an out on that. Point where you have to do the do what you right, have to and do, that's you the know? out. That's the three out. People, right. right, exactly. But imagine if it had to happen, and then it happened, and actually, actually did good doing it. I don't oh, know. I the don't controversy. Oh the controversy. my gosh! It would be great. It would be another beautiful Jim Beheim press conference, as always. Yeah, I, yeah. I I, uh, I don't know if we had the conversation <laughs> on the air or if it was if we were on the phone, but where I said, you know, it seems like a bad idea, I guess. But it, I mean, I could think of it. I could think of a lineup where it would work. Putting no shade down the center. Well, I mean, you look you know, at me like look, I'm an idiot. Look, look, look. But look again, I'm, I'm gonna go saying... with his. I'm gonna go with his train of thought and think that'd be the dumbest thing <laughs> that he'd do. And I'm just gonna. He said go that'd with be worse him. than putting I'm Pascal agree. at the one. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna agree. <laughs> I disagree with that. I hold. Well, I think that's a little that. overboard, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Pascal has got an alley oop coming There's right no to way. him. There's no way he could play. There's no way he could bring the ball up. Bro, no way. an alley oop coming right to him. All he's got to do is dr- drive the ball into the rim. Like it's just a just a matter or of physics. Or he just catches it and keeps the ball up high, just, and then just goes yeah. Right or he back plays up. keep away with himself. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what happened. So he comes down pers- with the it ball. Looks, it looks uh, like such a personal struggle. When he kicked, bro. When he came down with the ball, all I did was put my arms in the air. I'm like, yep, that's it. <laughs> he's done. That's it. That's all he's got. So he just needs the confidence, man. He needs the confidence. He needs to go up with the with the baskets. I mean, and not for anything. He is nineteen of thirty one on the year. So he's only put the ball up thirty one times down low. And I mean, it's pretty on. efficient. I'm not gonna it's sixty one point three percent. So that tells me he needs to do it more. Okay, he's seven one. Let's get the ball in the hole, bro. Uh, we talked about Elijah Hughes. I mean, he's the second best player on the on the team after fourteen games. He's right behind Battle and everything. He's taken twice as many threes as Battle, and his his uh, percentage is thirty six point four to thirty two point seven of Battles, and his field goal percentage is forty five point one to Battles forty eight. Battle really stepping it up after the first couple slow games that he had. He's really not had a real bad game, maybe one in between there. Yeah. But um, I thought O'Shea Brissett looked a lot more like himself. Yeah, that's self. yeah, that's it how didn't look O'Shea like he plays. was rushing things. Yeah. He was making his, his jump shot look nice. Yeah. He wasn't absolutely. really forcing it. He got down there, got in the rebounds. And that's another thing Elijah Hughes did that surprised me was get Ten down rebounds. in the rebounds. I mean we had two guys that had double doubles. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, I know. Imagine if we could average two um, not, not even average, but just get that that having two guys with a double double like once in a while, you know what but I again, mean? Again, it all just comes down to effort. They're starting to get the confidence. They're starting to get you know play with each other. Well, you, the, you know, the you know offense is talent. starting to click, it's just man. Putting it together. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and they but did again, have when you play good and when you're playing and winning, it just energizes you to want to just play harder. So absolutely, yeah. You, and, you're starting to see that on the offensive boards, and you're starting to see that on the defense end. I mean, I thought we played really. I, I thought we played pretty good defense all all day, really. I mean. T.J. Gibbs shooting up those. I mean, he made he was he was way about, about five threes that you know you just can't go out there and guard that. It's just sure. ridiculous. Yeah. So, I mean, and that was uh, really it. And then you look at you know the difference in fouls and free throw shooting and stuff. I mean, it could have been a different story. But again, like you said, I mean, I'm never really in the, the game of you know blaming refs, but you know, but if they lost that game, bro, I'd be blaming the refs. That was well, terrible. We'll, we'll get again into, too. I mean, again as too. much as Here you don't want to say it because it doesn't sound fair, then if the game was closer, you might have saw a different way of those, you might have saw different calls as well. So those refs sucked. They sucked. <laughs> I don't care. You can you can sugarcoat know, it. You can spin it any Twitter way Twitter you want. That. Those refs sucked. They sucked. They should be fired from life. You know, a lot of people on social media agree with you. So yeah, we'll get into that here in just a second. Um, I yeah, won my, so, my bookie pick. You did win your my bookie pick. That's right. That's yeah, right. I and I was going to say something, and um, I forget what it was because you just would not shut up. When? So, I don't know. Just now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, all right. Well, any final thoughts on the. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Oh, in, in, in post game, Tyus, I think it was Tyus that was saying, we, we, we were talking about. 
the practice time and being off and having the holidays and all that. We didn't know really how much they were practicing. Apparently, Ty has said that they had uh, gotten extra practice in. So, um, you know, hey, we didn't know. So that's pretty awesome. So he said that helped too. And it was defense, by the way. It was, you're right about the defense. It was good all game. Just, uh, yeah. just to you know, let you know I agree with you there. Okay? Okay. Oh, thanks. It's time to hear from you. The loud mouths from the loud house. The best damn college sports fans in the nation. All right. Y'all know where to go. At Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there. We present the question. I present the question. At the end of every game, thoughts thoughts on the game. Give us your comment there. And um, help us out, man. The Cuse Militia podcast, the fan's voice. So get on here. Use it. Use it up. All right, before we get into the fan feedback top 10, I want to remind everybody you can go on iTunes. And if you, if you like the podcast, if you like the show, you go on there, rate and review the show. Give us a five-star rating and a written review. And if I read the review on the show, then I send you stuff. I got all sorts of cool stuff. I'm running out of koozies. I got to order a couple more. But um, I have a couple left. So if you want to get on there and do that, go to iTunes. Uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts. We would appreciate that. Um, today, I'm just going to give stuff away. I'm just going to give stuff away. I'm going to give it to at Joe Catskill on Twitter. Joe, if you hit me up at QSmilitia at gmail.com, this will prove you listen, first of all. And second of all, if you hit me up there, I will send you some Cuse Militia swag and um, I'll get that stuff out. And as soon as you email me and, and we get your address, we'll send that stuff out. So, all right. This fan feedback is brought to us, of course, by J.P. Mulligans. Happy hour every Monday through Friday, 4 to 6, Trivia Tuesdays, every NFL game, every Sunday. And, of course, they got every Cuse game. And to top it off, not only do they have Cuse games every, every time they're on TV, but uh, and you get to sit there with Cuse fans, but you can get dollar off Labatt's. Labatt Blue, Labatt Blue Light. And if you, like, don't want alcohol in your beer, which is weird, but if you don't, you can get Labatt uh, blue NA dollar off. You can't beat wow. it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, right? Can't beat it. Uh, a really hard fought game on both sides of the court. Today they played with the energy necessary to be champions. Um, went hard for every loose ball. Loved it more, please. Well, we'll see. Come down to uh, you know, <laughs> ACC championship time to see what kind of form they're in. Uh, yeah. I, w- I would like to win more than one game in the ACC uh, tournament this year. Um, so, you know, I mean, look, it's improving and I honestly didn't expect it to turn around as quick as it did after the loss to ODU and Buffalo back to back in the dome. I thought that was going to be demoralizing. I thought it was going to take an act of Congress <laughs> to, uh, to fix that, you know, I don't know. You don't know. That's just when the pressure's great, on you. Great analysis. That's when the pressure's on you because you got to win. So yeah, I know. But they are they're they're improving. We know the talent that they have. You don't make the Sweet 16 off of luck. I mean, they did have the talent. They played with the effort, and I mean, now they're deeper, and you got more people that have they bring competitiveness because you know that they're nipping at the heels, like you said, with Carrie and and other people. So I'm giving Carrie 20 minutes. No, I'm not starting. Yeah, him, but I'm 29 20 to 11 minutes. yesterday, but if you know, what's he average? What's he average? I don't know. Probably 11, 12. I mean, it might be higher because of you know. The non-conference usually a lot of the bench plays more than that, so you know you'll see. The average more. is eighteen. But, it says eighteen, but, but it, it but was it, twenty-nine to eleven. So you'll see more about the averages when it comes to the conference play, because really this is where you you get your rotation down and you start kind of staying with that. You know, yeah. Non- non-conference is when you're trying to figure it out. So a lot of the guys got more playing time in non-conference that they're going to get in the regular season. So sure, sure, sure. Um, at free beer 77, like this guy, I like this guy a lot. Great shooting, terrible officiating as usual. Agree. Uh, still nothing from center position. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hughes was exceptional. Uh, Brissett played well, especially on the boards. Battle needs to be more aggressive, especially in the first 10 minutes of a game. Uh, I mean, what do you think, Joe? I'll give that one to you. I think, that that wouldn't be a bad idea to come up with kind of a game plan in the beginning. Um, to get him more involved know, some, offensively? Well, sometimes it just seems like it just takes a little while for Tyus Battle to wake up. So whether it's him or whether it's somebody else, I think you kind of got to have somebody step up and try to 
to make something happen. Who better than to be him? So, but yeah, I do notice that that a lot of times he does have some slow scoring starts. So, uh, you know, it kind of seems like we talk about it like all the time. Usually we start slow. So yeah, it's kind of the whole team, really. You know, but but Tyus is, you know, he sets the pace in a way. You know, I know Howard is supposed to, but Tyus is the one really that sets the pace on offense. Well, I think the more that we don't rely on him, I think we can rely on him in certain situations. And like the, even the announcers were saying, at some point in the game, you know, he's going to get frustrated. He's going to look for a shot and get get his shot, and he's going to score some points. But, I mean, the more we can move the ball around and just have – I mean, we have talented guys that can make shots. So if we can get open shots, I think, you know – that's the best way for our offense. Instead of just relying on one person going one on one or another person going one on one, moving around, moving around without the ball, and just being a team is 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 better. Yeah, it's better no matter what. So if we can get that going and not rely on one score or another, then I think you'll see more games like this with a you could a couple guys with double doubles and scoring a little balanced out. So uh, at Salty Warrior, we'll grind it out one game at a time. That's right. That's the uh, oh, Q yeah. Militia podcast. Mod motto, creed, credo. <laughs> wow, one game at a time. Yeah, um, pretty much. Uh, at PB forty four, looked like Q's team on the road in a must win situation. Very business like win. They are a much better team when they shoot well. To state the obvious. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, thank you, Captain it, Hines. <laughs> but it's true, and it's a very, it's a very easy. Um, point to make, but you know they've improved, and it's obvious. And we wondered if it was being at dome at the dome with some with some s- couple slouch teams, but going on the road beating Notre Dame, they proved to to hold strong. So at Doug Vaughn fan, hard to win eight versus five. They did two free throw attempts in the first thirty nine plus minutes. Great shooting though, had to have it. Yeah, again with the officiating, it was terrible. I mean, they'd go down and call a I, oh, numerous over the back penalties on our big guys, and I would see the same thing at the other end of the corner. It was like nothing, and there was times where you know you've got so much scrumming going on, something's got to be called somewhere. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm You're saying? Like, you think so? I mean, come on, man! It's got me no free throws in the first half, none, zero. Yeah, uh, and we're usually at the free throw line a lot, especially the yeah. way that we play. But yeah, I don't know. Um, Steven on Facebook, I guess nothing is free when you're visiting Notre Dame, especially the free throws, unless you're the Irish. Good, solid win for the Qs, yes. Um, yep. Overcoming the adversity of the refs again. Aaron, what a monster win on the road at a tough place to play. Opening up ACC play, let's go Orange. Uh, Lauren, big news. Our biggest news? Question mark. Huge game for Hughes. Had to be done. Yeah, it was his best game. It was the most points he scored. It's the most rebounds he scored. It's his first double-double in an orange uniform. And he's coming into his own, man. He really is. Yeah. Uh, we, we talk about it, and we're watching him, we're watching him freaking blossom into just a, a, a superstar. going to be a superstar this year, I hope. So. He's the best shooter on our team. He so. is. He is. He is. Uh, Nick says, considering we're playing against the refs, too, it was a great game. Orange emojis. Uh, Rick, glad the students weren't back yet. Always so much louder there. Love hearing the Let's Go Orange chants at away games. Great effort by Hughes. Will Chuku ever wake up and realize how tall he is? <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh, the, the, orange, the Let's Go Orange chants were loud. They were loud, man. Yeah. And that, that was yeah. awesome. There were a lot of Orange fans there, and there was a couple behind the bench that were getting Pretty l- rowdy. Yeah, getting rowdy too, so... Um, that's awesome to hear. Let's go orange chance inside of a opponent's stadium. I mean, come on. Yeah. And so, yeah. And will Chuku, when will Chuku wake, wake up and realize how tall he is, Rick? Um, well, if he hasn't yet, he probably won't. <laughs> My guess is going to be when it's too late. <laughs> uh, here's a bonus. That was your fan feedback top 10, but here's your bonus. Uh, Bubba, our, our buddy Bubba, who Steve on the Facebook page has dubbed the turd disturber. and Because uh, <laughs> Bubba's never got not, anything positive to say. So he does these backhanded compliments like this. Uh, Hughes is the only player we got this year. Come on, Bubba. 
you know, the Elijah Hughes, Brissett, and Battle combined for 57 points. So, you know, that's not true. Blatantly not true. So that's it. That is your fan feedback. Go there at Hughes Militia on Facebook and Twitter and join in the fun. All right, Joe. Clemson, yes. the 10 and 4 Clemson Tigers, 0 and 1 in the ACC, as they got handled by Duke in Cameron Indoor, though, um, on Saturday night. Yes, uh, they're going to they're going to come to the dome Wednesday, January 9th at 8 p.m. Uh, no, they are. Yes, they are. They've got three guys averaging double digits. It was four before the Duke game, actually. And after the Duke game, knocked one of them out of there. Um, Marquise <laughs> Reed leads them in in, in averaging six point uh, nineteen point six points a game. A couple guys like to shoot threes. They like to chuck them up. But David Scara is the only one that is really consistent at all. He's um, shooting 45.5% from behind the arc. Uh, and as a team, they really shoot good overall from the field, 484 but only 32 from distance. It's relatively close to what we shoot. And uh, 73.1 from the line. So this is also a team without a, really a signature win. They really haven't beat anybody that I thought was impressive. The most impressive, I guess, I don't know. The, the, I, how you want, I don't know how you want to put it. Uh, losing a close one to Creighton was the most props I could give them. Let's put it that way. What? They lost a close one to Creighton. That was it. There's, there's no signature wins there. There's no, like... There's nothing. So it's it's hard to say for me. Nothing. You, well, not really. This is where you talk, Joe. No. Oh, okay. Georgia. Okay. Not really impressive. Yeah, I see. South Carolina. Okay. I see. That's I impressive to you? Well, they're ten and four. I'll take that as a no. Obviously, like you said, 0-1 in ACC play. And, again, um, you hit on some of the guys. Um, they've been there for a long time. They're they're old. Uh, <laughs> they got a bunch of seniors. They start four seniors and a sophomore. Like you said, uh, Marquise Reed, 6'3", senior. Shelton Mitchell, 6'4", senior. And Elijah Thomas, 6'9", senior. They're, they're three guys that average double digits. Um, and they got two forwards, uh, Amir Sims, 6'7", sophomore, and then David Scar, like you said, 6'8", senior. Um, those guys both average about nine, nine and a half points. Um, that's the one thing. David Scar, he shoots good at three-pointers, but uh, he doesn't really shoot a lot of them. So, um, And then the main guy off the bench is a 6'4", guard, Clyde Trapp. He's a sophomore as well. So uh, they don't go too deep, and like you said, they're going to chuck them. They're going to, you know, shoot them up. Uh, they don't really have too many tall guys. Tallest guys, 6'9". And we've been pretty successful, although maybe lucky against them the last couple of years. Uh, again, usually um, experienced teams that have seen our zone, they can handle it a little bit better. They're more uh, used to it. Uh, but if you remember freshman year, Ty's battle, he uh, hit a game winner down in Clemson against them. And then last year we beat them in a close game, uh, 55-52. So... They've given us good games. Uh, it's not going to be easy. Uh, but being at home and, you know, coming off the confidence of these last couple of wins and the fact that we're shooting better and playing better offensively, I like our chances. You do? It's going to be a good game. I mean, no, they're real. Be a they're good re- game. They, I mean, if you want to compare, like, on paper, it's really, they're really close to us. Yeah. And um, except for, you know, I say they like to chuck them up, but. You know, Hughes has chucked up 99 three pointers this year. So, yeah. <laughs> but he's no, made 30. He's going to keep going. Yeah, he's made 36 of them. It's really good 36.4%. Um, a Clemson at home with a rank of uh, an RPI of 58 would be a quad two game. Yeah. So, even at home, they've, they've got a pretty, they've got a good enough RPI to keep us in the, in, in, a, as a quad two win as of right now. Right. So, and talking about some of those uh, type of statistics, uh, looking at Ken Palm, they have Ken Palm right now currently has Syracuse at 32 overall uh, with a 57 um, ranked offensive adjusted adjusted offense in a 13th uh, adjusted defense, and he has Clemson as overall 36 with a uh, adjusted offense of 47 and adjusted defense of 41. So that's really that's pretty uh, good. Yeah, and the net ranking uh, NCA, you know, efficiency tool, they have Clemson at 50 and, and us at 59. So 
Did I mean, what were we before Notre Dame? Do you remember? I do not remember now. <clears throat> um, Sixty. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, it should I mean, be. It's, like it's going to be a close one. The it's st- going to be another nail biter. There's going to be a lot of those. The students but, are going to be mean, back. Yes. They're going to be. We need them. Yes, absolutely. They're going to be there. They're going to be ready to make some noise, and you know, it'll be. It should get loud in there. It's going to be a the first conference game of the year. I know it's a little late in the middle of the week, but what better way to top off a hump day yeah. than going to a Syracuse game at 8 o'clock and watching conference play? I mean, seriously. No. You know? And these are the big games, dude. Yeah, these are the ones where we need the fans. You know, We don't need bumps bumps on a log sitting there either. So I know yeah. that place can get freaking loud. And, uh, you know, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, like, again – eight o'clock on a Wednesday. So, you know, you hope that the one extra hour that usually is, I mean, that's a little bit late for ner- normal, but hopefully that doesn't sway the fans. And like you said, the students and stuff, but we need it. These are the games we need. This is a big game. I haven't lost to them in the last two years at least. So. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else? You good? You're going to put up the, my bookie pick on uh <clears throat> Tuesday. You going to tweet that yeah. out. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, cool. Um, so some things might be changing with sponsorships soon. So enjoy the my bookie picks while you can. You know, you know, we'll see what happens. So, um, all right. Well, that's it. Thanks to Armchair All Americans. Thanks to my bookie. Thanks to JP Mulligans. Thanks to Armchair All Americans, my bookie, Shopping Town Barbershop. Thanks to all of you for listening. And uh, is that it? James on guitar. Thank you. Um, so that is that is it for this episode. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out. Hey. Thanks for listening to the Q's Militia Podcast, the fan's voice with Sean and Joe.